I'm Eddie Muller, welcoming you to Noir Alley. We're stopping in for a pop at the local bar can have consequences more dire than a watered-down martini. As you're about to discover in Dial 1119, a terse B made at MGM in 1950. It's a hostage drama in its simplest form, with almost the entire story played out on a single interior set in a lone backlot street. With no major stars in the small ensemble, there clearly wasn't a lot of money invested in this one. But it is produced by the Tiffany Studio, which ensures a film with more than the requisite amount of craftsmanship. In fact, I'll suggest that MGM cameraman Paul Vogel is the MVP of this show. He uses the starkness of the sets to produce sharp and shadowy images that are frequently stunning in their crystalline clarity. A few years earlier, Vogel was behind the camera on one of the trickiest productions the studio ever attempted, The Lady in the Lake, in which the camera assumed the perspective of private eye Philip Marlowe, played mostly in voiceover by the film's director, Robert Montgomery. Here, Vogel's camera work isn't nearly as showy and distracting, but for a project with an extremely short schedule and minimal budget, he gets maximum impact out of the material. Vogel's work is in support of a director making his feature debut. Now, let's face it, sometimes it helps to have an inside track in this business, which 30-year-old Gerald Mayer certainly had. He was the son of studio manager Jerry Mayer and the nephew of legendary MGM boss Louis B. Mayer. Prior to this, his only credit was an 11-minute offering in MGM's Passing Parade series of historical shorts, in which Lloyd Bridges played Eli Whitney, the inventor of the cotton gin. Well, the only gin in today's film comes from a bottle, and it's dispensed by William Conrad, playing the world's surliest barkeeper with a wonderfully inexact nickname. The premise of Dial 1119 is simple. An escapee from an asylum holds a half dozen drinkers hostage in a second story saloon. The disturbed young man is played by Marshall Thompson, who prior to this change of pace was known for sweet boy next door roles. Thompson underplays it almost to a state of catatonia, making it far edgier than if he was a raving lunatic. The customers are pretty much types. Lech, lush, newlywed, spinster, jaded reporter. Their backstories are barely sketched and the veteran supporting actors are left pretty much on their own to put flesh and blood into these stick figures. What gives the film extra intrigue, however, is its time capsule depiction of a particular moment in American history. An increase in the reporting of random crime led to a slew of films depicting disturbed loners throwing a wrench into the routines of daily life. In 1950 alone, films like The Dark Past, Union Station, Gun Crazy, and Try and Get Me all featured gun-toting villains shooting apart the social fabric. Frighteningly commonplace now, both in the movies and real life, but in 1950, the upward trend was just beginning. Of course, America's fascination with random crime increased exponentially with the spread of television, and Dial 1119 makes a point, probably at the behest of MGM executives, of ridiculing the invasion of the idiot box, particularly in a public place. People watching this film during its initial release must have been flabbergasted by the sight of a four-foot by three-foot flat-screen TV above the bar, since no such thing yet existed outside the MGM prop and special effects departments, and it wouldn't for another 47 years. Featuring such stalwart supporting actors as Leon Ames, Andrea King, Sam Levine and Virginia Field, who certainly knows how to enjoy a cocktail or five, here is Dial 1119.